So we have been talking on the matter of dreams and we explained few things about dreams. We touched on the aspect of um, of the way dreams were were interpreted with Joseph and there are things that we noted out on the aspect of Joseph. The first thing that we had to note out was that um, when Joseph dreamt dreams, there was a way God did to speak around um, places of his familiarity. We look at aspects like um, day at Abraham. When God spoke to Abraham, he told Abraham, I will make your descendants as stars. And we got to a place where we saw that the reason why Joseph and Abraham dreamt dreams that had to do with stars was because both of them were coming from a genealogy of moon, uh, of uh, astrologers who, who dealt with stars and the moon. And most of them we always hear that they worship the moon and the god of the sun. So God had to speak in familiar ways that they understood so that the message can be clear. Most of the times when God speaks it is he speaks in ways that are so much familiar so that we not only get understanding of what he is trying to communicate but also it can be clear of um it we we can be at a clear view and not miss the importance of what he wants to say because messages come through through dreams so dreams and visions are of paramount importance and a lot of people uh, they miss it uh, because they do not take them seriously we, we 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 spoke on the aspect of the emotional part um, when Joseph was in the prison and the Bible says that he dreamt he dreamt a dream and the moment Joseph dreamt a dream the Bible tells us that the moment he dreamt a dream the moment the two butlers and the white bearer dreamt a dream they woke up and they were very sad and in our explanation dividing men into the spirit the body and the soul uh, which he, with the soul comprises of the emotions the will and the mind or in the heart we saw that emotions were involved the dream when it when they had the dream there was a connection to them with the emotions that was um, the emotions that they had we want to get to get to see what really happened uh when when what's the importance of dreams all right um abimelech the bible tells us about a man called abimelech all right abimelech uh abimelech dreamt a dream also all right the bible tells us about abimelech dreaming a dream abimelech um dreaming a dream Abimelech is Abimelech is the guy who is the guy who took Abraham's wife if you uh if you study the word So let us go to the book of um Genesis chapter 20 Genesis 20 verse number 3 Genesis chapter 20 verse number 3 looking at the importance of dreams Genesis 20 verse number 3 all right now Abraham journeyed from there towards Negev to the south of the country and settled between Kadesh and Shah then he lived temporarily at Gerar Abraham said again Sarah to his wife she is my sister so Abimelech king of Gerar sent and took Sarah into his harem Remember, these are Hebrew words that are being used. A room, we are talking about tent or house. But God came to Abimelech in a dream during the night and said, Behold, you are a dead man because you, because of the woman whom you have taken as your wife, for she is another man's wife. Abimelech had not yet come near her, meaning she had not, he had not yet had intercourse with her. So he said, Lord, will you kill a people who are righteous and innocent and blameless regarding Sarah? Did Abraham not tell you that she is my sister? And 
she said she she herself said he is my brother in the integrity of my heart and innocence of my hands i have done this god said to him in the dream yes i know you did this in the integrity of your heart for it was I who kept you back and spared you from sinning against me before I did not give an opportunity to touch it. So return the man's wife for he is a prophet and he will pray for you and you will leave. But if you do not return her to him, know that you will die and you will uh, and, and all who are in your household will die. All right. So we are we are, we are looking at um, we are looking at a story right there. Genesis chapter number twenty. We we'll start from verse one. So the Bible is telling us uh, something profound. All right. Genesis chapter number twenty, from verse three. All right. So in Genesis chapter number 20, verse 3, the Bible is telling us about the issue of Abimelech. All right. So all right. So so Abimelech, what he did is he took Abraham's wife. So Abimelech went on further and the Bible says that Abimelech took Abraham's wife. It was out of his uh, integrity. And when he took Abraham's wife, remember that they had lied and they had said, is my sister, because they were afraid to that Abimelech would kill Abraham because Sarah was very beautiful. <laughs> Sarah was very beautiful. So the Bible tells us that in that very same instant, God visited Abimelech in a dream. Right, so, so in his dream, all right, so in his dream, God spoke, all right, in his dream, God spoke, and God said something specific to him while it was in that dream, all right, and he said. You are a dead man. God said to him, you are a dead man. And this Abimelech is alive. This is happening in the dream and God is communicating to him in a dream. And God is saying to Abimelech, you are a dead man. He has not yet woken up. But already there is a decree that has been decreed on Abimelech. That Abimelech is already a dead man. All right? That Abimelech is already a dead man. Look at the importance of dreams. As we are go going to understand this aspect of the dream, there is no symbol here, but these are certain spiritual activities that happen in dreams. So Abimelech is told that you are a dead man. All right? There are things that you need to that you need to 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 to, to see on this man's dream. All right? There are things that you have to see on this man's dream. Um, so Abimelech, what, what is to happen is, the dream is like a prophecy. He is to die if he is to wake up. And there is a condition. All right? There is a condition that he was given if he would want to survive. And the condition was... Return Abraham's wife. That was the condition. Return Abraham's wife. And so this was number one condition. Number two, let him pray for you. Now, for him to what? 
to live. So if Abimelech wants to live, these are the two things that he has to do. Number one, retain Abraham's wife. Number two, Abraham, that, that is the guy who is called him right here. All right? Abraham is the guy who is being called him right here. So this him is Abraham. This him is Abraham. So he is being told right there that return the wife of Abraham if you want to live. So this is something that is uh, spiritual. And many people have dreamt these dreams where um, when you look at the dream, the dream is changeable. And for you to change the dream, there is a condition that you are given that you are to follow when you wake up because most dreams have directions. So it was because he had already committed uh, something that was wrong and it had to be amended. And for him to amend what he had done, he had to come to a place where he returned Abraham's wife and Abraham had to pray for him. The, pray, the praying for him part it is something that is very spiritual um, that I'm just going to show you something, for instance, that uh, that happens in uh, in the spiritual. Um, and many people know how to change, know how to change what is called fate. They know how to change prophecies. They know how to change uh, situations. That is why you see when Abraham, this had done, he, he, he didn't. Abimelech was not just prayed for by Abraham, but Abimelech had also to sacrifice a sacrifice. It is something that is spiritual. Many people do not understand. Uh, many people do not understand this whole kind of a scenario. All right, many people do not understand this whole kind of a scenario. This is not just on a dream. All right, this is not just on a dream. Um, let's say let me not say just maybe a prophecy let me say there is something bad that has been spoken over your life a pro a proclamation all right let let's say there is eg there is um an evil declaration that would have been declared over your life. Maybe there's an evil declaration that would have been declared over your life. And maybe you are praying. And while you are praying, there was someone who is doing diabolic things against you, diabolic things against your life. In most of the cases, you realize that if a person knows that you have prayed and maybe they have dreamt a dream, you are praying where you are, they did something spiritual against you, and you are praying, you are reversing it. Maybe you are praying those uh, those prayers that are called dangerous prayers. If you are in those remote places where people understand spiritual principles, it's maybe it's a it's a person who's practicing witchcraft, and you are you are destabilizing the atmosphere through your prayers, and maybe judgment has been declared over them. All right. Uh, there is an evil, if there is an evil declaration like Abimelech or judgment, all right, judgment in which uh, this judgment we can say is prophetic judgment, prophetic judgment. What does, what will a person do in order to avert this kind of a situation? In most of the cases, that is where a person, um, a person brings a gift. Some of you have already encountered this way a person will just bring you a gift. They will bring you a chicken. And you know that the, this person might have done something that is uh, that is wrong against you. They might have declared something or done a proclamation that is wrong. Why do they bring a gift? In the spirit, the moment you receive uh, the gift, all right, what happens? The moment you receive the gift, um, uh, if receive it averts all right it averts the what the judgment it stops the judgment it stops the judgment is it's a spiritual principle many people have mastered this principle 
Many people have mastered this principle. So, especially people that operate in, in witchcraft, they will, you just see a person now beginning to showering you, showering you with gift and you're wondering, why are they really showering me with gift? Because they understand these spiritual principles. So, Abimelech, to be honest, when he took Abraham's wife right here, Abimelech, from the realm of the spirit, he was already dead. We were just waiting for the day he was to die. And the only way he is to reverse this uh, evil declaration, all right, or judgment, is for him to what? Is for him to bring this gift, all right? Is for him to bring this gift. The moment Abraham or anyone receives that gift, then there is the dream or whatever that judgment is evaded the judgment will already be averted. I know you have had such dreams and you woke up in the morning and somebody comes to a place where they are, uh, where they make sure that they change that uh, that scenario. So that is it when it comes to issues of, um, issues that have to do with prophetic judgment. So many people, many people I believe you have had encounters where you have dreamt such dreams and these things have happened to you. That is the only way to deal with it. Sometimes, um, it's a, okay, that is a spiritual principle. Politicians also, they do it. If they have done a lot of wickedness, they will find a way to bring gifts and it averts when the church is praying over justice. All right. So, so even, even when you would look at many kings of the old, they understood this principle and they would bring these gifts to, to prophets. Um, they would bring gifts to, they would bring gifts to, to prophets and, and all. And let us uh, take our Bibles to, to understanding and going back now to the issue of, uh, to the issue of, um, so one, once we are speaking about this, the next thing that you have to understand is when we, we spoke about prophetic judgment and the issue of, uh, of, of, of gifts and the issue of gifts, all right? I want us to go to Jacob, all right? All right. I want us to go to to Jacob. I think it's uh, in, 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 in Genesis chapter number 28. Let's go to Genesis chapter 28. Genesis chapter 28. Genesis chapter number 28. All right. Let's start from verse number 10. Now Jacob left Beersheba never, never to see his mother again and travel towards Haran. And he came to a certain place and stayed overnight because the sun had gone, had set, and taken one of the stones of the place. He put it under his head and lay down there to sleep. All right. He dreamt there was a ladder, staircase placed on the earth, and the top of it reached out of sight towards the heavens, and he saw angels ascending and descending on it, going to and fro. All right. And behold, they stood above and around it and said, I am the Lord God of your father, um, of your father, the God of uh, Isaac. I will give to you and your descendants the land and the promise on which you are lying. Your descendants shall be as countless as the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad the west, the east, the north, the south, and the families of the nation shall be blessed through you and your descendants. All right, so there were promises that God uh, began to, to speak. Verse six, verse number fifteen. Behold, I am with you. I will, I will keep carefully watch over you and guard you. You wherever you go, wherever you may go, I will bring you back to this promised land, and I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised. Then Jacob woke up from his sleep, and he said. Without any doubt, the Lord is in this place. I did not uh, realize it. So he was afraid and said, How fearful and awesome is this place? He was afraid and said, How fearful and awesome 
is this a uh, place this is none other than the house of God. This is the gateway to heaven. So Jacob got up early in the morning and took the stone that was on his head and set it as a pillar that is a, mon a monument to the vision in his dream and poured oil on it, on top of it, to consecrate it and named the place better, which means the house of God, which was previously the name Luz. Luz, which means an almond tree. Luz, which means an almond tree. All right. Luz, which means an almond tree. Now, the second thing that begins to, the second thing that begins to happen is, so when you go to Genesis, when you take your Bibles, the book of, uh, to the book of Genesis, all right, to the book of Genesis 28, verse number 10. All right, let's break that down. When you go to the book of Genesis 28, verse number 10, the Bible tells us about, um, about Jacob, all right? Jacob's dream. The Bible tells us about Jacob. And one of the things that I want you to note is the connection between the spiritual and the physical. You have to understand that when we talk about dreams, it's not only an aspect of you sleeping and dreaming. We understand that there is a connection that... Uh, that 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 is that that is there because um things to note is that all right things to note is that dreams are spiritual all right dreams are never physical dreams are spiritual so when god speaks to humanity it is from a spiritual perspective he is speaking from a spiritual dimension dreams are spiritual all right so if dreams are spiritual we have to get it clear that um that's why the bible says that a carnal man cannot receive the things of the spirit because they are what they are they are spiritually descend all right a carnal man cannot receive the things of the spirit because they are things of the spiritual that is in first all right first corinthians 1 verse 14 so it means it means you you receive spiritually so it means activities around dreams have got to be spiritual they can't be physical you receive spiritually so it means your spirit has got to be attuned when dreams are to come so when Joseph dreamt, when, when Jacob dreamt a dream, the Bible clearly tells us, um, clearly tells us the scenario that happened. All right, there are things that affect people's dreams. All right, and we are to explain it as we look at Jacob. There are things that affect uh, people's dreams, and one of the things that affects people's dreams, as you said, dreams are received spiritually. All right. What affects dreams? What affects dreams? Number one, all right, environment. Environment. The environment that you are in can affect the dreams you dream. Because when we talk about environment, you you have to understand we are talking about a spiritual climate all right spiritual climate when you talk about environment we are talking about the spiritual climate of the place in which you are in 
you it's it is hard for you to be in a place where there is a, a demonic cloud and expect yourself to be dreaming um to be dreaming um to be dreaming dreams that um that 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 most of the times are holy all right you you realize that when you are in an environment the first thing most of the times the spiritual climate matters that is why you see that the, this now categorizes a lot of people's dreams many people you see them beginning to dream dreams that have to do with uh beginning to dream dreams that have to do with, with spiritual warfare because the climate has got to be cleansed first you have to defeat and understand that um and understand that that channel the, the channels of information sometimes they are they are affected how do i know all right spiritual climate you you can see it on um on daniel chapter number 10. you can see it on daniel chapter number 10. it shows us about this aspect of spiritual climate where daniel in as much as he was praying the bible says that they were they were princes of persia that he, that that after he, he dreamt a dream and he prayed they got hold of the answer all right spiritual climate w what happened when we talk about environment all right jacob slept on a rock all right so i want you to underline rock right there jacob when he slept in that environment he slept on a rock what was so what was so special about this environment that jacob is doing and, and what is so important about this rock that joseph jacob is sleeping on you have to take it back and you remember that time um this rock when when you go further it is the rock which was the outer of abraham so this rock you can actually you can actually symbolize it as um where do i put this you can actually symbolize it as a a, a pillow all right let's put it on top here all right so this rock you can actually symbolize it as a pillow that he 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 slept on many people do not understand this aspect that uh, there is a connection between the physical and the spiritual this rock was not just a rock it had become an altar in which abraham had sacrificed in and the bible tells us that when he slept on this rock because a sacrifice had been done there all right so there was a connection between the spiritual and the physical and the bible says that while he was sleeping there he saw an open heaven all right he saw an open heaven while he was sleeping there he saw an open heaven there was a clear open heaven he saw angels ascending and descending why because abraham had established a a, a portal for the spirit on this aspect all right abraham had established a portal of the spirit on this aspect that is why most of the times you see that the day maybe you sleep on your pillow and maybe you are playing worship there are spiritual dreams that you dream why because the atmosphere you are sleeping on is saturated uh with a certain uh glory or you have tuned into a certain dimension you have tuned in to a certain dimension if you look at maybe if you are a person who travels and you 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 visit um you visit a place maybe you are traveling and you sleep at a place which is maybe a brothel you know those motels where people go with uh, to do sexual immorality and you sleep on the same bed you sleep on the same pillow 
where people do sexual immorality, number one, you see that your spirit will not be at ease. Even the dreams you dream that from that moment, they are very, very funny dreams. All right? They are very, very funny dreams. That is the first I think that I, I, I think I'll open up to you. They are very, very funny dreams. The second thing you look at, uh, you would look at the aspect of um, most of the times when you, you, you are at a place where it is a haunted place. There are dreams that you dream if you are at a house where it is a haunted place because of the environment of that place. Because of the environment of that place. All right. If I take you to the hospital right now, there are specific dreams that you dream because you are in that environment. I believe somebody is catching up with what I'm trying to, to explain right here. It is also, most of the times you would see that when people are in a place and you are dreaming certain dreams uh, as pertaining to that place where you are, you would hear them you would hear them tell you clearly to say why why can't you change the room you are sleeping in and most of the times if you were not sleeping well in the other room the moment you change you will see yourself sleeping differently the atmosphere the atmosphere so that is why you need to come to a place where uh, as a believer all right so I slept on all right so all right so my advice is that you come to a place where you you all right build an altar why am i saying build an altar it's in, it's it's very much important for every believer to understand that why are you building an altar you are building an altar to you are building an altar to secure to se, to, se, to 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 like secure uh, your channel You are building an altar in order to secure your channel. Channels can be interrupted like what I said. We we'll look at Daniel. And many people have experienced this aspect of your channel of information being, uh, being interrupted by the enemy. So you build an altar. The reason why you are building an altar, it is because you want to make sure that you are securing your what? You are securing your channel. All right? You are securing your channel that is why you are building an altar you are securing your channel and altars remember you want to have authority over your atmosphere dreams are important because god communicates to men through dreams god communicates to men through dreams instruction comes through dreams warnings come through dreams this is the reason why you should take your dreams so much you should take your dreams uh with so much caution you, you caution you mustn't really ignore this aspect of dreams like how a lot of people do take your dreams with so much caution build an altar pray over that place you are you, you are sleeping in all right pray over that place you are sleeping in i believe even you will see that many people even if they do not know um they do not know anything about the spiritual you would see that because of this issue of of an altar you would hear many people say uh, do not share pillows All right, you hear many people say, do not share pillows. It sounds simple, but you will see the consequence of it. All right, we, we, we will see the consequence of it because we all operate from different channels uh, 
we all operate from different channels of 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 the spirit we all operate from different channels of the spirit so if i am praying myself and my pillow is the place where i have prayed so much because an altar is built by consistency if anyone sleeps on my pillow they connect even to dreams if 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 you have um I, 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 there, there were times when people when they would come and sleep on my bed they would tell you i slept like a baby and i dreamt god correcting things and all it has become a platform of deliverance all right so i want you to come to a place where you where you create this kind of a scenario so the bible says he dreamt he saw angels ascending and descending on the it was like on the ladder angels were going up they were going down and he woke up and said surely um surely this is the place of god and the bible says that the moment he woke up he built an altar how did he build an altar um the bible says jacob uh anointed anointed the rock all right so this is important to note that the moment jacob wake up the bible says that he anointed the rock with the oil the, it was the only thing that he had all right he anointed the rock and this became him anointing the rock it became a covenant that we see now as we are going to touch on the next lesson uh god willing touching also with pharaoh that when he went to potiphar's when he went to to to, to the house of the man who became his father-in-law uh laban when god came to when god came to him god came to him and remember god when god came to jacob uh at laban's house okay let me put it on top here uh all right so when he was at laban's when he was at laban's house uh god came to him and said i am the god of bethel all right god came to him and said i am the god of bethel I am the God of Bethel, where you what where you anointed the rock with oil. And God gave him a spiritual advice of what he should do in order for him to prosper. So whatever he did on this aspect when he anointed the rock, what happened? It became sort of like a covenant. All right? Whatever he did right here it became a covenant whatever that he did on that aspect it became a covenant so it was now a covenant that when god visited him god told him and said i am the god of bethel when he was at laban's house so now he was he had secured a certain way of communicating with god and established a channel in communication with god through what he did so in most of the times you see that is my devotion with god that is my devotion with god all right that is my devotion with god and you realize that never neglect these encounters never neglect encounters with god in dreams most of the encounters for people who started seeing angels in the physical most of the times um all right it starts in dreams all right it started in dreams then it's it went into to 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 visions so there are dreams that when they happen when you see them you can the same way some people go and sow seeds for prophecies also dreams because dreams dreams are even more secure so when j when on this aspect when joe jacob did it he created a covenant which 
he helped him in years later that when God visits him, he said, I'm the God of Bethel. Why? I'm the God of the encounter. So never, ever ignore this aspect of dreams. When God is communicate with you, communicating with you, take it seriously. When God is communicating you, understand that there is no dream that is to be taken lightly. Every dream has got to be taken uh, seriously. All right. So...